Okay, so it seems it's just about time. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Horizon Weekly Insider number 18. Happy Thursday. And um, I'm very excited and glad to be here as usual, uh, especially because it's, it's holiday season. So another um, good excuse to, to be happy and grateful. Uh, please remember the recording of this call will be available in our Horizon podcast, as well as in our YouTube channel, as usual. And as, as well, remember to ask your questions at the end of this call so we can have a good Q&A session. So let's start for, uh, with the updates from the engineering department. Luca, if you would like to please go ahead. Hi, everybody. Luca from Milano. Thank you for following us as usual. And uh, again, special thanks to Trezzo for his continuous support. This is uh, another week of uh, progress on multiple uh, areas, multiple sites. On the main chain side, for example, we keep working on the required changes to allow the backward transfers from side chains to main chain. So this is a big task that uh, involves the design, the implementation of uh, class hierarchy, new version of block, memory pool, modification to the get block template, and many more other subtasks, which are all being worked on in parallel. And we plan on having a first code review of this part starting from next week. Always related to main chain, we are in the code review phase with three different uh, uh, GitHub open issues, none of which is really high priority. So there are no critical issues there, but we are working on those as well uh, as they need to be addressed uh, anyways. So in case uh, you wonder what specific issues uh, we are addressing first, those are number 95, 108, and 172. We keep uh, uh, working on the consensus implementation strategy, of course, as we reported last week, and in particular on how to keep track of a stake of eligible forgers for a given epoch and uh, about the introduction of the, um, of the needed data for providing proof to be a, a valid slot leader. But also we keep uh, making progress with the analysis of the main chain block explorer issues, uh, the introduction of new unit tests for uh, specific functions, specific uh, code coverage, and more. These days uh, we are doing a deep dive session to discuss and define the details of the sidechain model incentive scheme. So more info will uh, come on that next Thursday during next uh, Weekly Insider. And this is also the reason why Alberto Garofoli is not here with us in this moment. And uh, um, last but not least, uh, and this may be no news if you have followed us closely uh, in the recent times, but I'll mention this anyway. We are in position number 10 on Flipside Crypto overall ranking and just 37 points away from becoming an S project. Uh, we already are uh, an A project, and we are approaching the very final achievement uh, you can get on that ranking, so the S letter, uh, as a result of, uh, let me say, our ongoing uh, efforts. That's it uh, for, uh, from me, from us, uh, for now. So back to you, Angie. Thank you, Luca. Great updates. So next one, we have Kronik on the infrastructure side. Hello, everybody. Um, so the tracking server update uh, finally went into production. Uh, we finished testing over last weekend. And uh, we deployed the update on the two servers that handle payments uh, on Secure and Supernodes first. And uh, last Monday was the first day where we uh, issued roll-up payments. Uh, subsequently, on Tuesday, we updated the remaining servers and uh, everything is uh, working fine so far. Uh, no issues reported. And um, uh, roll-up payments are um, a big improvement for all of the light client wallets um, and also for hardware wallets uh, like Ledger. Uh, the burden of um, getting all of the uh, needed transactions and signing all of those transactions is uh, reduced by a factor of seven uh, with the latest update. And uh, we hope that going forward, um, this will solve a lot of the performance issues that people have been dealing with. Um, additionally, on the tracking servers, rate limiting um, has been deployed, but um, we currently have set it to very high limits, uh, just as a first step to, to see uh, what the usage is, how many people run into those limits. 
And uh, in the future, that those limits will be decreased. Um, but we have published uh, documentation where people can see how to use those limits programmatically, how they can detect them, and how they can adjust the applications uh, to take those limits into account. Um, other than the tracking servers, uh, the infrastructure department has been working on giving the faucet a new home on a new server. And um, we'll also be adding a, a testnet faucet. So um, anybody that wants to test a secure or super node on the testnet cluster, for instance, will be able to get some Zen through the testnet faucet. Uh, progress is being made on, on the migration. And um, we will update you all with uh, a migration date when this will take place. And uh, we're also working uh, on improving our internal monitoring scripts um, with regard to exchanges. So uh, in the future, we want to be able to actually monitor all of the uh, exchange wallets where possible and uh, know about if uh, they are down or if there are issues um, so that we can direct on that. Um, that's it for infrastructure. Passing back to you, Angie. Hey, Chronic, I just want to give a huge um, you know, thank you and con congratulations to the to you and DevMan for the work that you've done on the servers, the tracking servers, and keeping basically one of the most important things that we do operationally, uh, our node system healthy, operational, uh, and our network growing and healthy. So, guys, thank you very much for that. And, you know, I know it's a constant battle, but very much appreciated. Thank you, Rob. And also, thank you to Alan. He did uh, most of the work on this one. I'm just the guy testing it. No, I take credit for a lot of things I don't do, Chronic. It's fine. And just joking. <laughs> I, I know you're super humble. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so thank you. And next one is Gustavo on the UX side. Hey, everyone. So to start, we have the help desk update, which is brought by Ruben. Hi, guys. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So Ruben here from Mexico reporting the help desk metrics. We have, as you can see on the pie chart, the vast majority percentage corresponds to the faucet tickets. And you can see in the text part the details of the pie chart. So we have uh, on the second place will be Sphere by Horizon, three tickets we received this week. We have uh, on additional metrics, we have 11 tickets waiting for support, 66 tic tickets waiting for customer, and 22 tickets are on the pending state. On the customer satisfaction side, this past seven days, we have a 4.4 out of 5.0 average rating. And this is uh, this, the, the total amount of reviews were 11. And that's it from my side. Thank you, guys. OK, thanks, Ruben. On our side, we continue working on the Sphere mobile testing. And uh, Ruben has been doing an amazing job. So a shout out to Ruben. On the web dev side, we just updated our main, main website with the French translation. So merci, Manon, for providing the translation. And speaking of translations, on the faucet, we added the localization feature. It's already live. And at the moment, we are just uh, waiting, waiting for new translations to, to add up. And uh, still on the faucet, we added uh, a feature which regards to email reminders, which is already also live. And you guys should receive an email if you become inactive uh, on the faucet after a certain period of time. And uh, we are, as Chronic mentioned, we are working on migrating the, the faucet to a new server. And that's it on our side. Thank you, Gustavo and Ruben. Next one is Rowan on the BD side. Hello, everyone. Happy Thursday. Uh, Gustavo, that was almost a convincing French accent. I'm quite impressed. Um, so from, from our side, from uh, both BD and just kind of talking more generally just for a little second, uh, obviously it's coming up to the end of the year, which means that it's kind of time for us to reflect on what we've done, what went well, what didn't go well, and try and figure out what our priorities are for the, the year coming up. Um, and, and not just what the priorities are, but what's actually required in terms of both people and resources to properly execute those priorities. So that's kind of a little flavor as to what's happening internally here at the foundation. And I'm sure Rob will touch on this in a lot more detail when he feels it's the right time to do so. 
Uh, but that is a, a big chunk of what's happening behind the scenes to make sure that we are positioning Horizon for, for massive growth for next year. Um, speaking more specifically about what I'm working on, in fact, before I move on, just a quick shout out. Uh, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to the Crypto Associate. Uh, these guys are a relatively new news site. They spent uh, quite a lot of time researching Horizon in a lot of detail. They asked a load of really, really good detailed questions. And they've just today kind of published the output from that piece of work. Uh, so you'll see that coming out across a variety of different uh, horizons. But it's an excellent report. So thank you very, very much to the guys over there for doing that. Um, right. So on the integration front, unfortunately, not quite ready to really shout about anything super exciting in detail. Uh, but what I do want to say is that the BD team are doing a great job of building up a really healthy pipeline of exchanges and wallets and customers providers and a variety of other different partners that we can start uh, working with in the coming weeks. So nothing massively new and groundbreaking for me today, um, but stay tuned for better updates in the future. And if anybody else from BD wants to jump in with an update as to what they're working on, that would be fantastic. Hello, everyone. Vano speaking from Georgia. Uh, so news from our region is that uh, Ukraine has introduced their crypto legislation during the last week with terminology and AML KYC regulations. And uh, there, is, uh, there are some uh, concerns from uh, hardcore crypto enthusiasts regarding the government monitoring. But from uh, the information I got uh, talking uh, with our friends and partners there, uh, Mainly, the changes are perceived positively because it now opens uh, doors for crypto companies and exchanges to do business uh, in Ukraine legally now. So, And considering that Ukraine is one of the most active countries in the Eastern Europe with regards to blockchain and crypto, uh, that's quite a positive thing. Also, we are translating our faucet in Georgian and Russian languages. And uh, with regards to Russian, I would like to thank our Russian community member, 640 kilobyte, who helped with uh, the translation greatly. And that's all from me. Thanks. Thank you, guys. So next one, we have uh, Jonathan to give us the marketing updates. Hey, Andrew. How's it going? Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Okay, so the big thing for this week is we're going to send out the newsletter and it's just about complete. We're just uh, testing it and putting some final touches. Uh, like uh, Gustavo mentioned, uh, we're translating the FOSS into different languages and I've sent an email to everyone who can help translate our instructions page. Hopefully you can get me those instructions back by tomorrow so we can set it live over the weekend. I'm also looking for a new provider. We're currently using MailChimp. Um, I'm not, um, I mean, it's, it's okay, but I like a program with more functionality. So I've been busy this week um, having calls with other email providers that I think would be a better fit for our team. Um, also, we're looking to refresh the search results and how we appear in Google. You know, some of that we can control, some of that we can't control. Um, but I think that there is room for improvement there. And I'm starting to make a list of all the things that I think we can change. And I think that will be great for our organic traffic. Like Rowan mentioned, we have had a couple of really positive reports about Horizon this week, including one from Up Upblock.io. Uh, and they're actually having a giveaway for $100 in Zen. So thank you to everyone who's writing really great stuff about Horizon. And also, Erica has two things to add as well. Hi, guys. So um, just an update on this week's uh, partner highlight. Today, we'll be sending out messaging about our partner, um, AnyPay, which is one of the um, point, of sales, point of sale systems that accepts Zen. Uh, that'll be going out in a couple of hours. So you should see that soon. And I'm also working on updating our team bios. I've contacted quite a few of you already to get your feedback on what I've written and updated from what we already have. Um, there are a few of you I still need to contact. I am in the final leg. Now I'm just working through our BD team. Um, so if you're on BD, expect to hear from me sometime today, probably. Thank you. Thanks, Erica. And just a reminder, please ask your questions on Menti um, if you are curious about anything at all. 
Thanks. Thank you, guys. Okay, um, next one we have Dean on the legal side. Hey, everybody. Good uh, afternoon. So, um, not a lot to report on the legal side, except I, I'll share with you uh, the other day I participated. We're, we are members of the Blockchain Alliance, and um, there was a seminar on privacy coins for uh, law enforcement. And it was really headed up by the Coin Center, which is a, an advocacy group for blockchain and, and strong privacy advocates. And um, its chairman or director, Jerry Brito, did an amazing job of emphasizing why privacy is important and why having private transactions is important. And I won't bore you guys with all of the details. It's fascinating. Um, and in fact, I'll link to an article that was mentioned um, that Coin Center put out called the case, the case for electronic cash. Um, but one of the examples that he used for why privacy is so important, even with respect to transactions, is apparently during the Hong Kong riots, a lot of people wanted to participate, but they needed to purchase train tickets or transportation to the locations where the demonstrations were taking place. And obviously paying with your credit card um, you know, for a taxi to whatever the location of the demonstration is, is, is not good for your standing with, with the Chinese government. And so many people were using crypto to the extent they could to purchase transportation so that they could remain private with respect to their participation in those political demonstrations. So anyway, it was a really interesting, um, uh, presentation. And I will say, that, uh, you know, the, the law enforcement people who participated seem to have a grasp of why privacy is important. And of course, you know, from their perspective, chasing bad guys is also important, but it wasn't just a one way, you know, bashing privacy is bad and privacy needs to be stopped. I, I was very pleasantly surprised um, by their ability, law enforcement and regulators to, to understand both sides of the argument. So that's it for my side. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Dean. Next one, we have Rosario with Growth and Engineering. Hi, guys. Uh, I'd now also like to join Rob in congratulating the infrastructure no node team for the flawless uh, update of the node tracker. I actually had to go and, and double check that the the upgrade went out uh, because everything just went very uh, smoothly and silently. So that was a, a very great from our team. And of course, Alan and, and Chronic um, did the brunt of the work. Um, also, Mario Supra did some high level direction and we had Angie doing some uh, PMing for the team. So thank you for the entire team for, um, and of course, marketing team for communicating this as well. And uh, I've been participating uh, with a few working groups uh, within the organization. Um, one's uh, reorging or just realigning uh, the organization. And, and you've heard Rob uh, mention this over the previous uh, weekly insiders, and, and I'm sure he'll mention some uh, additional for today. And also uh, we'll be working uh, to create a, a roadmap for 2020. And as Rowan alluded, we, we have uh, the desires will have to match uh, with uh, current resources, but I'd like to at least start with what our ideal state would be and then fit in uh, with the resource allocation. Uh, we've had some delays with our mobile, uh, the Sphere mobile. And uh, we'll be and doing uh, those announcements, uh, uh, formally announcing what the delay will be. But uh, we have some core functionality that still is uh, in the find fix cycle. So it's really great to iron these out. Uh, it's it, even if the core functionality was was uh, fixed, it still wouldn't be ready for production. So we do need to have the. Uh, the community help us with testing, and that's something that we will be looking forward and announcing a future date for that. And um, that is it for now. Thank you. Thank you, Rosario. And now uh, for the final part, um, Rob. 
Thank you, Angie. Um, okay, let me see. Okay, so as, as Dean mentioned, and this is something we haven't really talked about yet, but uh, we have been invited to participate in the Blockchain Alliance, uh, which is an, an industry and government, basically regulatory body and law enforcement consortium, uh, where uh, we basically have the opportunity to interact with these uh, you know, gov- governing agencies and organizations that we would otherwise not have the opportunity to, to interact with. Um, and, you know, I'm very happy to do so because we have to, as an industry, um, participate in the conversation so that regulators and law enforcement don't, don't equate privacy with criminality. That's really the one thing that we want to, you know, constantly hammer in is, you know, there are many very good legitimate reasons for privacy and they have nothing to do with criminality. And if we don't have a voice in these conversations, it's very easy for there to be misunderstandings that can go too far. Um, so we're happy to be part of that, at least participate, um, you know, at, at some level, uh, joining the likes of Zcash that also participates in these types of conversations. Um, so I, I think it's unambiguously a good thing, um, you know, and we'll see what comes of it. Now, as Rosario mentioned, we have the, you know, our operating tempo is going to slow a bit over the holidays, but I have to say, as Rosario and Gustavo convinced me, um, it, crypto doesn't sleep, so nor should we sleep over the holidays. Now, we are going to be slowing things down a bit, but we're going to keep some basic um, you know, critical functions open and, and uh, running. So things like our weekly insider, we'll, we'll stu- still do this over the holidays. Uh, we may switch things up a little bit and maybe focus more like what Rowan said on recapping 2019 and talking 2020. Um, so maybe there'll be special weekly insiders um, because things from an operational level will slow a bit. Uh, so expect to see that. Um, and for team members, just a quick note to you guys, uh, if you are planning to take time off um, at any point, make sure you're coordinating that. And we cannot allow uh, critical functions of the organization to just stop. Um, so for critical things uh, and, you know, the managers of the org will know what those are. Uh, so make sure you're, you're talking to your managers and make sure you clear uh, time that you're taking off, uh, just so everyone's on the same page, and we can do handoff of duties for some key key roles. Uh, something that I'm really happy about, I, I believe we mentioned it last week, but we are assigning some in-house engineering resources now to deep dive into Sphere. Um, so this is a project that we've been largely outsourcing to our, our uh, uh, one of our um, software engineering partners, it, and now we're assigning some in-house resources to you know. Uh, as basically a precursor for Sphere, like we said all along, is uh, a, a bigger app than just a wallet. And this is something that we envision as our top candidate for uh, something akin to a dashboard for our eco- our sidechain ecosystem. So it's important that we, we start in-housing some of this work and un- as uh, you know, a precursor to that, but also open sourcing the project. Uh, something that we've mentioned is extremely important to us from the beginning. And I think the project has matured sufficiently t- to the point where we can start um, start down the path. Uh, so I think that's a really big thing for the projects. We want to open source it. And the vision here would be uh, for this project to be then extens- extendable um, to potentially be our tool for the sidechain portal. Still TBD on that. We need to have our, our team and Alberto in particular uh, really do an architectural review and, and you know link this to a path forward in that direction if it's going to be the best path forward. Um, this week, we're working through some, some ideas on ZBF, ZBF reorg, and we've mentioned this before as well, but basically, we're trying to cluster some functions that reflect our strategy evolution and our lessons learned on that. So the big thing here would be focused on growth and forming this dedicated growth team, and then uh, thinking through, uh, uh, you know, just how we interact with the community, how we're going to massively scale our community and better serve our community. So this is all leading into our 2020 plans for massive growth. Uh, and ultimately, we have to do more with what we have. So we're, we're very fortunate that our you know, fiscal situation has, has recovered quite a bit from the worst point um, that we've seen over the last six months. But um, So we're for sure moving in the right direction, but we also want to be conservative and look to where we can make other cost reductions. Um, like I said before, we're, we're focusing on subcontractors for now uh, because these are, are costs outside of our, our in-house team. Um, that I think we, we need to really consider what can we afford, what can we not afford. Uh, and then the, the long-term perspective here is we have to be long-term solvent as an organization. It's okay if 
you know, during crisis periods, we kind of dip, dip in the red, but it can't be a prolonged thing. We have to be prudent with, you know, being conservative on, on costs, but then also thinking of where are we making investments. So this is all feeding into our 2020 plans. And uh, this is, will come out in more detail once we actually solidify some of these plans and present it to the community. But you'll see in this, the milestones that we do, we, we're going to put out there for projects are going to be budget contingent. Um, so we have some things that we know for sure we're doing. Uh, for instance, for sure, we're, we're maturing the side chain uh, to beta than production. That's, that, that protocol is going to happen. This is a key part of our strategy. Uh, we're not going to stop that investment. For, but for other things, we have a, a big pipeline of things that we want to do that I, I think would be significantly value creating for the project. But they are going to be resource contingent. Things like how are we going to improve the efficiency of our main chain? When do we introduce uh, new main chain innovations, for instance, that better better suit the strategic you know, direction of the project? Uh, things like that. And we've been talking about DAG, for instance, for a while. That would be uh, on that list as well. Um, but these are all projects that, you know, it's one thing to talk about, but it's another thing to actually plan and resource and then execute. And on that level, we have to be uh, conservative and realistic with where we are. And I think that we're going to, you know, you're going to see that we're building our plans to be, you know, to include optionality where we can focus resources on things that we know we need to do for sure anyway, uh, but then reserve other major projects as options that we can turn on when the time is appropriate. So that's what I have for now. Do um, you want to kick it off, guys, for any mentee questions that the community might have? Hey, Rob. Thanks for the update. Sure. So the number one question today is, from Block Explorer data, Horizon Chain has consistently more transactions than Zcash. Do you plan to integrate their Blossom upgrade to reduce block time and increase throughput? Excellent question. So we always look to Zcash upstream as um, you know being part of our wish list of things that we would like to do. Um, now uh, this one in particular. So we're still. You guys know there's no surprise when when it came to uh, Sapling. We we paused that project. So we basically integrated it into our code base on on the development uh, branch in GitHub, but we never actually activated it. And the same thing would be true here, except that we haven't even programmed in work yet for Blossom, um, but it, it's something that's certainly on the radar. Um, now, I, I, I'll i tell you my personal perspective, um, and of course, this is all resource contingent, but um, things like decreasing block time, uh, we, we just don't have a, a pressing need for it at the moment. Um, so it, it's for sure a nice to have, but it's not like our, our chain is so congested that we need to do that for throughput. Um, so I, I like to think of things as we prioritize resources based on absolute need first. And then we have kind of a, a, a longer pipeline of, of nice to have items. Awesome, thanks. There is a short follow up. It says when sapling. <laughs> same deal. Uh, same deal with that. So we don't have a, a pressing necessarily for sapling right now, but also uh, sapling was particular because it did introduce a potential denial of service um, vulnerability, which we didn't want to introduce into a perfectly healthy working code base. Um, so it's one of those things that, yes, we, we've integrated the code, we've tested it, um, things l look good to turn on when the time is right, but uh, we did not pursue additional research into how we would go and solve that, that DDoS uh, issue. I know Zcash was working on it, to my knowledge. Um, I, I don't believe that it's been solved to date. Um, so in general, I, so there's two ways that I look at this. One is never introduce something that might be vulnerable to, to a, a system that's stable, first solve the problems and number two um you know what's our strategic direction anyway for our main chain you know, is, is this something that we want to do for main chain or do we want to take a different path that's tbd and this will all be part of our 2020 planning awesome thank you uh, i guess we'll do one more question here what is the best way to do a multi-sig preferably multi-wallet including hardware for zen right now for safekeeping Oh, man, that's a great question. So I, I have my way to do it. But Chronic, do you want to maybe chime in here? I'd say you would be the expert on this. Um, unfortunately, still the command line. Or if you are a programmer, uh, Zencash.js, uh, there are currently no easy ways, no uh, graphical tools to use multi-signature addresses on Zen. But uh, it's certainly on our wish list for our uh, Sphere wallet. Perfectly stated. 
And with that, Jonathan, back to you. Sure. So that was a quick answer. So let's maybe let's do one more. The next one is when is the next quarterly live stream? That's going to be January 30th at 1, at 1 p.m. Eastern. Um, the next one is how much Zen will it require? How much Zen is required to run a sidechain? Hmm, interesting. That's a really good question. Now, uh, I don't have an answer immediately. So we, we definitely need to bring beta to market and actually start running some. And they will be sidechain dependent. Um, so for instance, th- there, are, there are a couple different ways to look at um, how much Zen you need to run a sidechain. So first of all, there's staking. So we, we have basically at least the first generation of sidechains we're launching or, or proof of stake. So if you want to participate in the block forging process, you have to stick Zen into that. Now, all transaction fees are going to be in Zen as well. So how much Zen you need is going to be a function of the, the transaction activity for your particular sidechain. Um, and then, so it, it would be a combination of these things that as of right now, I couldn't just give a kind of a numerical answer, just more the variables that matter. Great, thanks. And by, uh, that's all for the questions. And by the way, uh, what kind of what is being the in the term about sent Luca, you're lagging a little bit. You have you some Robo, Robo, Robo Luca. Luca. <laughs> <laughs> Sounded like we were hacked by Anonymous there for a second. <laughs> Just to satisfy my own complete random needs, Luca, I need you to say exterminate. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> this degenerated quickly. <laughs> Well, that, that's it for me, guys. Um, one to me. You. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're, you're still the wrong <laughs> Guys, crypto shouldn't be this much fun, should it? It's supposed to be working. So back to you, Angie. Okay, I think for next time, maybe look at the robot. <laughs> okay, so it was awesome being here as usual. Have a great Thursday, you all, and see you in our next weekly insider. Bye-bye.